Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Analyzing the Muslim Heroes of Speaker's Corner. Now here I've been asked to, to comment on a video by the Islam apologist who calls himself Muhammad Hijab. The video with the title Black Community React to Tommy Robinson's interview with sellout Sarah is anything between embarrassing, hilarious and vicious, with Hijab trying to get different groups to concentrate on anything except Islam. So diverting and dividing those who want to focus on issues regarding those humans with dark skin only and setting them up against each other. Since other tactics I have exposed several times now are no longer fooling people. Are he and his fellow apologists getting desperate and are clutching at straws in an attempt at rescuing their childish beliefs? The video was made by a channel I've already had a run-in with where their dishonest tactics were used to try and remove a video of mine and my comments are of course immediately deleted. The opposite of free speech. I suppose even though there is no copyright violation, no hate or spam or whatsoever they come with, they will try and censor this video anyway. Okay. In the video, you have somebody who Dawood on the left, somebody who calls himself Respect in the middle, and our hero, Mr. Hijab, on the right. Um, what we want to talk about today is kind of like the EDL, the right wing, what you guys think being in the mix of it, like, you know, or in the thick of it even. Now, funny enough, the topic that we hear is, is not what the title of the video suggests, but rather the EDL which was a UK group opposed to the Islamization and installation of Islamic law in the UK a few years ago, based on the increased influx of Islamic culture and demands in a town near London called Luton. The man who co-founded the EDL in 2009, known as Tommy Robinson, left due to concerns over an increase in far-right tendencies in the group. Today, he is a journalist and someone who orchestrated an event in Speaker's Corner in March 2018, where he read a speech on the importance of free speech, something totally alien to Muslim apologists. Now, after a minute and a half, Hijab pulls one of his dishonest stunts, showing a video to everyone, not of the EDL, not of Tommy Robinson, but of Sarah Garvey, a British actor who sometimes goes to Speaker's Corner and also talks about Islam. Now, Hijab makes a point of not mentioning the screen name, but the birth name for some reason. Others have gone to great lengths to distribute not only the name, but also the home address to try and intimidate him. And he even had to get police protection after death threats were issued against him, all because he dared to talk about Islam as a non-Muslim. Hijab shows an interview between this actor and Tommy Robinson where the only topic is freedom of speech, not the EDL, not politics. Um, I want to know from you why you think freedom of speech is uh, important. Just a human right we humans have fought for for centuries. Now, I have no idea who this Dawood guy is, but he would make a good Muslim apologist because he's clueless and, sorry I have to say, that he's a complete idiot in, in the real sense of the word. And I was on Tommy Robinson's page actually just doing a bit of research and I saw that this guy, for about a week, he was campaigning, him coming to Speaker's Corner in order to defend freedom of speech. They're going to take away our freedom of speech and I have to go to Speaker's Corner and speak as if there was never, that there was no freedom of speech to begin with at Speaker's Corner. He does not comprehend what the issue is here. He does not grasp that this freedom of speech is being eroded by Muslims who are trying to introduce blasphemy laws and restrictions on free speech everywhere. People who dare criticize Islam and the guy who supposedly distributed the Quran initially called Muhammad are intimidated restricted and threatened with physical violence. And that is the problem. And that is what we, the rest of the free world, are fighting well, against or for, the ability to freely express ourselves without limitations. And this fool simply ignores that people are being sent to jail only because they are critical towards Islam. 
People are treated like terrorists only because they are critical towards Islam. Journalists are jailed only because they are critical towards Islam. Videos, tweets, comments are being removed only because they are critical towards Islam. Entire YouTube channels are closed down only because they are critical towards Islam. I've lost countless channels only because they were critical towards Islam. I call a dishonest person a liar, straight out and to the point. And why not? Why should I sugarcoat that? It's the truth. It's not hate. It's criticism, not hate. I don't hate all Muslims or all religions. I admit I hate those Muslims who were shooting at me, trying to kill me, and who did kill lots of others I knew around me. And I think I have every right to hate them. But I don't hate all Muslims just because of that. Now, in the video, after, well, three minutes, this Tawud, he simply forgets that the person in the video he's watching, Zara, was threatened with physical violence, not words, but physical violence because he used words, mere words, to ask questions and demonstrate and illustrate some illogical points in the Quran. He used words. Dawood does not understand that this is a problem. He does not seem to know how some Muslim apologists react to the truth when it comes from non-Muslims. They are so used to hearing lies they label as truth, they are frightened by real-life truth when confronted with it. I don't know, do you, do you remember the proverb of sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me? Well, sure it's old, yep, and, but it's as valid as ever. And that's all we demand, the ability to speak, not to kill or injure someone with weapons, just to use words. And then the other person can choose whether or not they want to be offended by words, mere words. It's not violent, it, it's not anything physical. But some aggressive, violent Muslims couldn't handle this. They were unable to respond in an intellectual way, simply responding with words, rationality and reason, and had to resort to threats and violence, like here in Speaker's Corner. And that is why it was so incredibly important that Tommy Robinson made a point of using Speaker's Corner for exactly the purpose it was started for, even if this simpleton does not understand it. He just did the right thing at the right time, at the right place, regardless of what one thinks of Tommy Robinson and his political views. And then Dawood claims, Tommy really seems to like create like these methodologies and these, these problems like these. So, no, 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 no. Tommy Robinson did not, and I repeat, did not create the problem here. Some Muslim apologists did. And this is just the reaction. This is what we're seeing at the moment where street movements like the EDL, like Pegida, like all these different groups, all the way to political AFD in Germany, are pushing back against Islam, showing resistance where traditional politicians fail. So these violent Muslim apologists are actually to blame for the current anti-Islam stance. But I think they will not really comprehend this. Now, how primitive some of these people are becomes apparent when Sarah talks about some idiots who can't distinguish between an actor playing a role and the person and how he himself played a bisexual person. And <laughs> he job starts to snigger like a little girl. That's pathetic. And now it even goes further downhill. He job is so incredibly stupid. He makes the false accusations of a man being gay when there would be nothing wrong with it other than being a lie. Comparing it with a gay Muslim at Speaker's Corner. Now being gay as a Muslim is something they get killed for when his fellow Muslims might even throw him from a high rooftop or a cliff. And here's the text from Ibn Abbas. Okay, so hijab is unable to differentiate between the lie of being gay, where it would have zero consequence, and being gay when it is strictly prohibited by a merciful God who threatens gays with the worst punishment possible. Really? 
<laughs> okay, but hang on. So what if Sarah were gay? Would that change the contents of what he asks and says? No, of course not. But Hijab somehow needs to tarnish Sarah and in his childish mind thinks this is doing some sort of damage, which it is not. But Hijab is too primitive to comprehend this and pretends that Sarah thinks that being gay is negative. You remember Paul Williams and all this people's corner, yeah? And he was battering him. But you see here, because the white man's in front of him, mm. he doesn't want to tell his true views on uh, homosexuality. Which he doesn't. He just made fun of the double standards by some Muslims. Remember guys, it's speech, not the speaker. When you can play the role you understand, then from my head, you have to be able to mentally, you know what I'm saying, relate to it in some way, shape, form. I couldn't play that role. And now this Rasbeck guy chimes in and shows once again that he's not so clued up. No, an actor does not have to have the personality of the character he is playing. That is exactly the challenge for an actor to play different characters who at times can be on opposite sides of the table. So the guy playing the villain might be charming and a really nice person in real life, whereas the hero could be a total prick in real life. No, I'm not going to go into details with examples here. I think we will know some of them anyway. So does a man acting the role of a bisexual need to be gay? No, just as the killer does not need to have killed in real life. Or just another example, a singer like Freddie Mercury was able to sing just about in any genre. I really wonder at times what goes on in the head of some of these guys. No, you cannot just pin somebody on one role and then say you need to have the character for this role. Like he's very frustrated that people are calling him homosexual, but he was willing to accept payment for performing homosexual yes. acts. So you and now uh, this, this drifts off into a very unpleasant area where it's lies and deceit. What homosexual acts is he talking about? No, Sarah described exactly what his role demanded and what he did and did not do. There were no homosexual acts the way he described it. It's fake. It's a movie. <laughs> oh, boy. And then this Raspet guy goes on I mean, with, with really stupid nonsense, claiming Tommy Robinson must have been a racist. And based on what? For Tommy Robinson went on his Twitter and said he's coming down for free speech and everyone that came was white, you understand. And, and, That's and, a and, good and, point. And, and, because the people who came to the free speech event were white? Really? Why does he say such idiotic things? There is no evidence whatsoever that he's a racist. If anyone thinks he is, well then bloody well provide the evidence. Now, I don't know of any racism in connection with Tommy Robinson. I oppose him on anything political. But I can't accuse him of, you know, racism without any evidence, which apparently other people do. Things like, you know, Britain First is also doing the utmost to stay away from anything remotely connected with racism. So you can accuse all of them of all sorts of things, but I think we should stick to the facts. But hey, if I am wrong, correct me by all means. And uh, respect lies. I don't know why. And who pointed this out to me? Well, Kalam and Raj. Neither one of them is lacking skin pigmentation or something. And Kalam was warmly greeted by Tommy and Raj made a point of standing right next to Tommy during his speech. And nothing. So what is this guy talking about? I have lost all respect for respect. Man, just look at the videos for crying out loud. It's simply not true. And here the black nationalist is going overboard. If you look, you will find lots and lots of examples showing exactly the opposite of what is claimed. Well, come on, here's one example. Yeah, it's America. I'm from the US. Yeah, we're just here to support free speech, yeah. brother, you know. And here's another example. This is not about Tommy Robinson. This is about freedom of speech. Simple as that. Okay, so this is total nonsense. So what does your job pull out the bag next? I mean, up until now, everything has been just a big fail. Yeah. All right, so this is what he said, yeah? This is Tommy Robinson's response. He goes, if it hurts that much, then F off to Africa. And then this is no better. 
He okay. said, but basically in the video he goes, it, hurt, it hurts me that Britain had done all these things, yeah? Mm. So that's why he can never associate fully with Britain. That's what this guy yeah. said, yeah? A typical quote, man. Doesn't this hijab stop at anything? Doesn't he have any positive morals left in him? Enabled your family to come here and seek refuge, presumably. Well, we came here because of what? Because of the condition that Britain left my country. That's why I'm here. So you feel uncomfortable with your Britishness, whether you like your well, British there is, passport there is, there or whatever? There's a British passport. Yeah, I feel completely uncomfortable with it. And I feel it ashamed and it hurts. The tweet that he is referring to or he's showing, it's a single excerpt as a reaction to a video where a Muslim migrant from Eritrea states he hates the UK and it shames and hurts him to live there. I wonder whether he's receiving British welfare. He's receiving clothing, shelter, health care. So, once again, this is in no way a racist comment, regardless of how much effort hijab is putting into this to make it look that way. This is deceit. This is the lowest of the low, really. And with respect, he falls for it without asking any questions as to why, where, how, nothing. It's a shame. It's like me defending yeah. the free speech of the KKK. And this Ruspik guy now makes things even worse by, by asking... You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. what, what, what is in my interest yeah. to defend yeah. their free speech? Why? Would he want the KKK to have free speech? Why indeed? He really does not understand anything yet. Man... That's the entire point, you idiot. I can't believe that people are so stupid. He demands to talk about his ridiculous nationalism based on skin color and can't understand that the KKK would want to curb this. Is that now what everybody wants? You can only talk about the weather? Oh, but only in positive terms. I mean, that's crazy. I totally reject his black nationalism, but I will fight for his ability to talk about it. That's what free speech and free expression is all about. Not asking for free speech only for specific groups at specific times. It will not work that we continue showing tolerance towards the intolerant and we curb our free speech and radical Muslims can say what they want, using our society to abolish our society. Wow, what an idiot. I mean, he equates EDL with Tommy Robinson and then makes himself look a total fool when he is now claiming nobody in his gang, in his black gang, gang gang, will support Tommy Robinson because he's a racist leader of the EDL. Oh, I feel like shaking him and somehow getting some sense into his head. What is this fool talking about? And then it's really pathetic what happens next, where Tommy says he was in a pub and there were non-white people. And now hijab goes and says, well, there were maybe 97% whites. Well, also in Speaker's Corner during the free speech event. So, Mr. Hijab, how many non-whites exactly would it take to appease you? I would love to ask hijab this question. What for him is acceptable to be called non-racist? What ratio? In my opinion, he does not understand the words he uses, but uses them because, simply because they initiate a reaction. And if I watch the videos Muslim apologists make in Speaker's Corner, what is the percentage of women apologists? 0.01% or something? Now, and this is now the thing, because if I now check the doctrine, I find females are generally oppressed in Islam. And that explains it. That explains why you don't see so many women in Speaker's Corner. Now, does the same apply to the ratio of whites versus non-whites at the free speech event? No. So what exactly is his problem? And... By the way, I am unable to confirm his percentage anyway, as I see a total mix of color when I watch the videos. Well, the ones that were not false flagged by Muslims and taken down. So what is left? They show that there are people, colored people, there's all sorts of races during this event. And yes, I agree, there's a lot of hooligans who are associated with the old EDL. And yes, there was, uh, th yes, EDL people can be violent. Absolutely, I'm not saying anything against that. 
but it's not the entire motto and is not what everything is about. And it's not what Tommy Robinson is about and what he is being criticized for here. Wow. Okay. So in summary, I mean, the, the hijab video neither shows a reaction of the black community, but just some ignorant fools and they don't react to the interview, but misinform propaganda. And there is no sellout by Sarah. The entire video is one big disaster. And hijab would be ashamed if he were a normal thinking non-Muslim. I know I would. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, taking an interest in the video. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. But do me a favor, tell me why, because it really interests me. Thanks. See you in the next video. Bye. I hope someday you'll join.